Welcome back to Level Up the Classic, and this site is familiar. I am still fiddling with the carbs here, and honestly it's not going that great. Fix a lot of issues we had last time when I was running crazy rich. I took it apart and, because if you remember when I had the carbs apart, I just set them back as they were. They were set to max rich, I thought maybe it needs it for some reason, so we set it back to that. Um, but then I took it apart and I set them to how you're supposed to set them and I still had issues. Remember this thing had tons and tons of vacuum leaks and things like that when it came in here and that's the only reason it ran. Um, even with it all the way leaned out now, it's still rich. Idles pretty nicely, but when you give it some throttle, black soot comes out the back. So I found that there are little o-rings inside the chokes. There's a little needle in there with an o-ring. I've already taken one apart and fixed that and I've also set the choke so that it hopefully closes faster. These uh, the bimetals there. So I'm just taking this one apart. When we get it to the bench, I'll have a look. I'll show you that tiny little O-ring. And luckily in one of my rebook kits, I have two of them. Get it back together, fire it up, and hopefully, 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 we can get it so that it's not overly rich because as of filming this right now, it is one week until we need to be on the road and driving. Actually, it's the afternoon now. So in a week from now, we will have done the first day of driving on the road trip with this car and the XJS. So XJS is ready. This one, not so much. All right, please excuse the mess. I am, yeah, this is a little bit on the stressful side for me because I was hoping to have it running well by now and sorting out other small issues on it but um hoping an hour or so that i'll feel better about everything so that's that and i felt that that was engaged in there so that is good and i have felt that they've moved because this thing has gone in it hasn't gone in fully but it's gone into about thereabouts that's also something we're going to do we'll have to turn those a little bit more just in order to uh, hopefully get the chokes to turn off a bit faster. And, well, this is just a summer car, so if it will have a tiny bit of difficulty starting in winter, maybe you need to hold the throttle a bit. I don't really think that's a big deal. All right, so what we want to get to is there's a needle in here that meters into a jet, and that is the enrichment part. And there's no ring on there. And uh, I, say, I do have a spare one somewhere. This is the old one from the other side. They're tiny little things. And if they leak, then even in the closed position, fuel goes out of it. So let's get the... Let's see, does that work? Yep. You can take this off here in the back and sort of knock the whole thing out of here. I'm just going to tap it gently with a screwdriver. Alright, I think we're going to have to be a little more violent with a hammer. There we go. Um, you don't really have to take it out all the way because you have a little plug here that you can open up. And there we go, that needle falls out. And there is that little O-ring. So let me get the new one. And they are, I mean, they're so tiny. There we go. You can barely see that there's a hole through them. You see, that's how tiny they are. So we'll put that one right there. Get the old one off. And slide the new one on. It is quite a tight fit.
There we go. And that, that slid on. And I'm just going to grab some bright clean. I'm just going to clean out that hole in there. Just make sure there's absolutely no debris in there. So that slides in like that, and that moves pretty freely. Try and get all of this lined up again is sort of the slightly tricky thing, because the air valve here, or the, I think you call it the kick valve actually, is spring loaded. On there. Yeah, I think we're pretty much there. We'll tighten this all back up. There we go. Now that's moving smoothly, we'll put this back into place. And now, have a look here. So this is full choke, and that is all the way up. So we'll put this little cover on here. sure that still moves freely and if you remember when we put this I'm not sure if I filmed when I put these together or not but there is there's a notch there notch there and notch there and they all line up and that is a factory setting but what I'm gonna do is I'll put it in and then I'll rotate it about that much it's, you know eight or ten millimeters and that should aid in it closing faster because my guess is that the bimetal is getting a little worn out and this is how I'm just checking that it's it is caught on the thing. So that is the normal position, and I'll put it there. And this goes like so. And now it's just a matter of putting the whole thing back together, and then I'll put it on the car. The rear card is easier to get to because you can remove the battery. But uh, the front one was a little tricky, but you can get this, these off. According to the manual, you're supposed to take the carbs off to do this, but I thought it would be a right pain to remove the carbs. But uh, yeah, pretty happy with that. I'll tighten it up, put it back in the car, refill it with coolant, and we'll see if it fires up. Got it all back together, filled up with coolant again. Let's fire it up and see if it works. Also see if it works with the key. I haven't messed with the relay, but I cleaned the connections on it. Next step would be to uh, take the relay apart and clean the points in there. But let's see. See that relay? All right, let's go out and hot wire it, and I gotta really have a look at that relay. All right, let's try this again. All right, idle's a little bit high, but we can set the cold idle later. Let's uh, go and have a look around, see how everything is running. Way too high, but I was messing with the idols and stuff before, so we'll have to have a look at that. It's 
not throwing out black smoke at least. Have a look out the back there because we can see the snow. Still a little bit wet. Alright, we're talking about the idle, but uh, I'm gonna let it warm up and we'll see what it's like when uh, we have some heat and chokes. I turned down the idle screws and nothing happened. I realized it was uh, this thing here was just stuck in the throttle linkage, so that's why. I'll turn it up again, just give it a little bit more idle. But that's why the whole thing was racing like crazy. I mean, it does need a full tune, but we'll let it warm up. These are starting to get warm now, but I mean, this is sort of the high point of the engine, so we gotta get all the air out of there, cool and circulating. I don't think the temperature gauge has started to move a lot yet. Not really. And you know, we're still running the old spark plugs and all of that, which is great because we'll have ruined the new ones. I haven't checked the timing or anything because the house not wanted to really idle uh, slow enough for me to do that without completely bogging down. But uh, hopefully, hopefully, it chokes actually turn off this time. Idle is starting to come down. And uh, one thing I'm just doing here is just lifting a piston for like an SU. You see, as soon as I lift it, it just. See it? They're a little bit rich. I still have a tiny bit to adjust them down, uh, but we're at the limits. I have read that there are some issues with that uh, Strongbox do like to run a little rich. So, uh, but we haven't touched timing yet. But um, worst case, you can always compensate a tiny bit with timing. But um, we're starting to get some heat and things here. You get a uh, thermometer there. We're at 80 degrees at the thermostat housing, 66 there, so it hasn't really opened yet, the thermostat. We have 69 there, 68 there, so they're pretty even. But it is a lot, lot better than before at least. Okay, it's better. It's not burning my eyes anymore. And this one, the air, plunger thing the idle kick out is really going in all the way this one is starting to so we're gonna see maybe it's just some air maybe this one's a little bit slow if not take this housing off rotate it even more to get that thing to turn off more fully but uh, I still I can still lean them out a little bit more so I think we're gonna do that they're both a little bit rich what I was doing there with the finger is basically the same thing you do with a screwdriver or with you know, the lifting pin on the SU. Because if you lift the piston, if it immediately dies, you are way too lean. If it just rises and rises and rises, you're too rich. So it was rising a bit, but when I got over halfway, it would go down again. So if it goes up and then down again, you're pretty good. But we're going to check with the exhaust gas analyzer. I'm going to do that later um, and all of that. And check timing. I mean, there's a lot, but I just want to see that we can sort of get these working. But let me get my adjustment tool. I think I have um, half a turn left so I can lean them out. So I'll try that and then we'll see if that makes a difference. Okay, we have a 750 RPM idle. Oil pressure is great. I mean, we got 40 psi here at idle. Temperature gauge, I think, is reading a little bit low. Because it is should be up at the end now, and uh, I mean I've just done the roughest, roughest tune ever. Because you're always gonna start with ignition, which I have not, which I will do. But yeah, 14, 15, 
15. So they're sucking the same amount of air. They're balanced in that way. So I think smoothing this out will be plugs and ignition timing. I think the chokes are definitely turned off on both sides. Uh, and I just lost my screwdriver. And it revs up very nicely. And then it takes a little while to settle down. And I'm not really familiar with these um, the valves here, but I know that they're supposed to open just to give a little bit more air on run on to help burn fuel. So maybe that is why it's running on a bit, but they're all new. And then it comes down to a very respectable idle. I tried to check the timing, but I can't. It is misfiring a little bit on cylinder six that you check it on. That's probably a bad lead or something. So that's the miss because I checked the timing light and all the other ones and it will blink constantly. But on there, it blinks for seconds, stops, blinks for seconds, stops. So it's really hard to see, but it seems to be pretty close. It's supposed to be eight degrees. It is somewhere around there. Um, hard to say exactly what it is but it is somewhere between uh, at least between 8 and 10. so pretty pretty happy with that but i thought i'd just show you guys that it does fire up pretty well now and i think with new plugs and new ht components and actually a really good run i think this thing is going to run really well i do need to fix that starter relay but not today because I gotta go inside and edit this for you guys so you can watch it tonight. But let me just show you how it fires up. It's been sitting for probably a minute now. And you see, that's not bad. I found that it idles better with the uh, these valves, uh, the run-on valves removed. Because uh, I think what they do is they just, you know, keep the RPMs up a little bit to burn the unburnt fuel. So um, it returns to idle faster with those removed. So we'll see if I run with them or not. I haven't decided yet, but it is definitely running a lot better now. All right, that is a big thing fix. I was really worried that wouldn't, you know, get it running right. My last sort of, you know, last thing because I want this thing to make the trip would be to grab the intake and all that for my XJ6. A little bit of shame to pull that car apart, but that was my sort of backup because that has a perfectly tuned set of carbs and everything's really good on that. But now they are running, working as they should, and I'm going to see if I have those valves connected or not. I like the way it idles down faster, but I think it doesn't really matter when it's, you know, with the automatic transmission, those valves. It might help a little bit with other things. The nice thing about them that I liked is that when you t started it up with those connected, it would idle up for a couple seconds and then go down. So it made for a very nice startup, but um, they're all new and working as they should. I'm just not sure if I like the way they're working. Anyways, a week left to go, a lot left to do. I'm gonna go and edit this for you guys. Then I'm out servicing transmission, bleeding brakes, servicing the rear end. Hopefully the tires arrive tomorrow um, or Friday. I'm gonna call them tomorrow at least. Also, otherwise backup is grab tires from something else I have laying around. But we're getting uh, we're getting very close. Anyways, if you like this video, please give a thumbs up, share it with your friends. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe to the channel. It really does help out a lot. Until next time, I'm Adam. This was Luma for Classic. I'll see you soon.